I thought the movie was okay. It was watchable. Um, it was a Hollywood version of Lost Highway. I, I like I like how you just throw right into the middle of things, like right off the bat. I feel like I'm entering the middle of a story, but at the same time, I also felt kind of like, can we can we just take a breather for a second and just yeah. let me understand the world I'm in from it? I thought that that was the best example of pure invention that I've seen in years. I yeah, it was fantastic. It's the reason I go to the movies. Yeah. By the end of the movie, I felt like there's no other movie that could be that awesome again. Yeah. And now I feel like I may never be able to see another one. <laughs> it, ruined, it ruined all of movie <laughs> for you. I'm really pissed at Inception for ruining the rest of cinema. <laughs> yeah. Up until um, that, that um, incredible Joseph Gordon-Levitt hallway fight scene with yeah. gravity, I was like, this is a really great movie. And then after that, I was like, I don't even know what to do anymore with movies. I'm watching action scenes that I've seen before. I've seen these action scenes uh, before. For the exception of the hotel. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's interesting. But, I mean, if that would have been two hours of that, then I would have been okay. I enjoyed it. I thought it was the best of a genre that I have become familiar with and happen to know and love. Yeah. But, so I kind of finished off and went, wow, 13th floor, except a lot better. Yeah. Twice as much exposition as there needed to be. That dry, and I was sitting there going, oh my god, I'm going to hate this movie. Because it just wore me down. I was like, I get it. I get the premise. I get it. I get it. I get everything. The basement, the dark secret. Did he kill her? What did he do to her? That's going to come in at the end. Like, it was like, good God, get on with it. I mean, I understand oh. what you're saying, but I feel like they pushed a general audience about as far as they could push I think them. so. I thought the first hour and a half was boring. They weren't telling a story with it. At the beginning. They, they told the story up until the part they got uh, Ellen Page there, and then after that, there was no story in exposition. They were just standing around talking, and I was like, the concept was really interesting, but not 45 minutes interesting. But the problem is that they talk about this inception thing, and I don't care. They're just talking. Yeah. They're talking. If I wanted to talk, I'll, they're not, turn, they're I'll not put telling. on law and order. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, and I'll I it was much more cohesive, I felt, that they yeah. were trying to build believable realities, and they built that into the system. But at the yeah. same time, what they say about dreams is that you don't realize you're in a dream, even though something weird happens. So they should have put in a bunch of just tiny things in each dream that were out of place. Yeah, that would have been fun. But at the same time, you accept it as reality. Yeah. Like they've, Establish that at the beginning and then they didn't follow through. Yeah. Well, let's admit it. Like, the last image is freaking cool and you're supposed to care about his kids, but you've never spent any time with those kids. So you have to accept him talking about how much he loves the kids. You, you see them appear throughout the entire movie. You see the back of their heads appear That's throughout the, the entire movie. Well, I know it's the you, point. You, oh, get, not, you get emotionally well, attached to that. So I, oh, I substituted did. spending time with Leo and caring about yeah. Leo and his it was, dream. Yeah, exactly. Because the real. Because it was. All they were telling you was that a story had happened and they were reminding you that a story had happened right. rather than show you the story until the exposition at the end. They used the dropping van as the, you know, the timekeeper. For oh, the yeah, which oh, was like, crazy. oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was high, literally, it, was, it reminded me of High Noon. Instead of just cutting to a clock, though, it was a van falling. <laughs> <laughs> all the characters are who they are. They don't come up and double-cross anybody. They're all pretty good people trying to earn a living, but they've got good... I appreciated that so much. It was very, very, very refreshing. Yeah. Have people just be who they are. It wasn't I, I always thought that, but it was to the point of being unrealistic, how too much they trust in yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I would even want to go into my husband's dreams, because yeah. who knows what I'm going to find, and I don't want to move those things around. What? Is I thought he did a really good job of each of the levels had a different texture to it. Yeah. So as soon as you went to a new level, even if you weren't like looking exactly oh, yeah. at the main character, you knew which level you were. Oh, yeah, the, the snow level, and then there was the beat. Yeah. Just the, that alone, thing. the yeah. ability to keep your place. Oh yeah. As he cuts from level to level, yeah. was just genius. Oh yeah. That's, that's it. I'm out. <laughs>Okay, you're good. You're good. All right, wait. No, for it. Wait, we need Chris Nolan for this. <laughs> Do you want to get, like... Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Well, gravity, shifting. Gravity, uh, shifting. Uh, gravity. Uh, gravity.